Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. In my last video, I did a somewhat tongue-in-cheek look at CIG's changes to the PTU wave system. While I had some fun with it, one of the limits I have set for myself when I started this channel is to not criticize without suggesting specifically how it could be better. Of course, for time and format reasons, it can't always be done in the same video. So this is kind of part two of that prior video. Now, when I come up with what seems like a better idea, I get a lot of comments along the lines of why didn't CIG think of that? Why did they come up with such a bad idea? The reason is, of course, hindsight. Hindsight can make you a genius even if you are the densest dolt. Even me. Or you. But also, CIG. There's been plenty of examples of things made, unmade, and remade, which is easy in hindsight to say that CIG is stumbling, but in hindsight is also why it is happening. CIG needs hindsight too, and the latitude from the supporters like us to admit that to use it. So I am going to start from a presumption that CIG had a reason to change things, and that the reason was in fact the reason stated, that it was getting hard to get a steady ramp up of users in PTU testing. Which actually makes sense. Because the PTU is misnamed. It isn't the persistent test universe. It's the non-persistent test universe. The NTU. And you certainly would not want to make it persistent because balance will never be right and you want people to be devil may care risk blind to pushing things. You know, testing. But that non-persistence means that nobody is going to grind for advancement. In a weird way, testing is the contrary of advancement. Advancement wants certain steady progression. Testing seeks the uncertainties. So, they needed more gradual entry into the PTU and some incentives for more playtime among testing users while still maintaining their long-standing promised incentives for concierge-level backers and subscribers. So to review from the last video, here is the prior and new PTU waves from CIG. Now the non-controversial change was general players being given some phase 1 access for the most active users, but also some moved to later phases. The controversial part was the splitting of the concierge backing across all phases rather than just phase 1 and doing it based on the chairman's club level. This yielded the absurd notion that CIG was somehow pushing everybody to spend $25,000 and the less absurd notion that CIG was pushing everybody to spend $10 a month. Now let's get to the details of the alternative I came up with. So to start with, I decided to go with letters rather than numbers because I didn't want to confuse with side-by-side -side comparisons. So concierges, all concierges, are together again, along with them all subscribers. But within that bundle, you get subdivided according to participation. So you still have the promised advantages of being a subscriber or major backer, but you also still keep a participation incentive within those that still have that advantage. In addition, by having a section of very dedicated but non-concierge, non-subscriber players in these top letter tiers, we reduce the accusations that it is entirely pay to win, again conceding that playing the most unstable and buggy non-persistent test universe is a strange thing to call a win. But then I thought, why do we have a fixed number of waves at all? We don't say that new release can only have letters A through W in test and then has to go live. No, if we need an X or a Y or a Z or even beyond that, we do. We let stability say whether it is ready for live, not a pre-assigned number. So do the same thing for server ramp up. The team comes in each morning and asks, are we ready to go open testing? No. Are we getting enough test user stress and data? No. Well then, add another batch of X thousand users. Call it wave F or wave G or whatever. Still prioritizing by prior participation levels to keep the incentives. So that's my proposal. 10% of the credit mine. 90% good old hindsight. Could CIG still implement it for the 3.20 cycle? It's still an Evocati, so I guess the main thing would be for CIG to swallow a bit of pride and admit that take one really didn't fly. There are also likely other possibilities, I think, but remember that just going back to the old way is not one of them, because the tool did, in fact, need to be sharpened. And now for an update on our giveaways. First, we have the 10,000 subscriber thank you for the LTI Hull C, the colossal cargo container carrying craft, or $100 of Steam store credit, to be given away when the C goes live, now still scheduled for 3.20, and the big annual IAE week ship giveaway for your choice of either the Galaxy Complete, the massive modular mining moving medical machine, or the Bainu Big Box Barking Bazaar called the Mergeman, or again, $100 of Steam store credit. 
Just be a member and be entered automatically or subscribe and comment using the secret word. And the secret word for this video is what is responsible for 90% of my proposal. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.